for the last year. Um, I was working with Vertex framework and want to share my experience, my impression, and probably to describe to the community what it is, uh, what's is what its main concepts, and uh, uh, I added. You see this uh, extra title. This not a title, but kind of a, kind of a phrase. No framework is an island. Uh, this one comes from a very famous poem uh, that says, "No man is an island." Uh, it, actually, it's uh, it's about that uh, people they live in communities. They can't be, I mean, as a person. And uh, when someone falls from the community, uh, the whole uh, the whole structure it suffers. So this is this is it. So. This is, we'll come back to it. Okay, so you can reach me out um, by this mails link, uh, Skype links. So, okay, let me start. Um, this is the demo project. We probably will explore it a little bit, but I put some effort there. There are smart things uh, that works with, work with Vertex framework. So you can go there, explore if you want to try that that's just a demo project go push it create pull requests or anything just feel free to explore okay so let's start from its position i mean uh how how do the creators of this framework what they wanted to achieve so it is just another framework i mean just another spring or uh, something like small like micronaut and like that yeah so uh, uh, the key points of this framework is uh, it is targeted from the very beginning is it was targeted to building reactive systems uh, I think it was started around 2012 or 2014 I really don't remember the history but uh, even at that year the primary goal was to build reactive systems, which are, uh, if you go, if you remind what uh, what is reactive, uh, its primary goal is responsive. Other four, other three are just means to achieve this, but the main goal is to become responsive. And you can't be responsive without being asynchronous. Well, probably you, you could, but it's the easiest way to achieve this. Okay, uh, the next one is it's minimalistic. Uh, there are zero dependencies, almost zero dependencies. So it's very bare bone for building something small, for small microservices for small applications and like that. Uh, it is very performant. Uh, it comes from that the fact that it is asynchronous and also it is single threaded. What is single threaded? We'll go into that deeper later. But uh, there are a lot of uh, benchmarks where you can see that it performs very well. Uh, actually, it is a polyglot uh, framework. I mean, you can even write JavaScript for Vertex and why you would ever want that. I will cover that later. But even with uh, JavaScript, uh, with Java, I, I don't remember, probably not Scala, but JVM languages in general, this is very fast. Okay. So yeah, as I said, it is for small uh, applications and microservices is well fit. Yeah, and the last point, it is pretty predictable. And it is, this is a good point. Uh, I mean, it's not just responsive, but predictable. And when uh, things got hot, I mean, when there are a lot of requests you need to process, it degrades graceful and predictably. This is, this is something that comes from responsive, but I wanted to cover this as a, as one of the key concepts. Yeah. Okay. So what's what are the differences? I mean, when you work a lot with, a lot with Spring Framework, for example, uh, when you come to Vertex, what will be the different differences? So the first thing is the model of parallelism. It's very unusual for Java developers, and it, it is even unusual for Java developers who do threading and asynchronous programming. Yeah, so even, even there. 
the second one, the APIs. I mean, APIs, the interfaces that we, you will, will be using, all of them a, are also asynchronous. And that influences greatly on your mindset. You should shift your mindset, mindset to that. Uh, you, now you need to use a, a different style. Uh, one really unique thing is that it uses actor's model. We'll go with, in, uh, into that, but this is very, um, it highly influences the way how you build the architecture for your applications. Yeah. And this is the this is just a conclusion. So it lets you unusual code style, the code structure, interfaces design, and the overall architecture. Overall architecture. Yeah. Okay. So let's start from actors. What is actors mo model? And uh, vertical is the name for actor in Vertex framework. This is their their own name. I mean, it's unique. Something unique. Okay. So. Pretty simple. We have three actors. Uh, what is actor? Actor is an abstract concept. Even there are languages that support that on a language level. This is Erlang, very famous, um, not famous, yeah, probably famous language for, uh, for parallel programming. This is, I mean, it achieves good results there. Uh, well, the main concept is there is that you should structure your application like set of actors. Actors, actor is something like a process, maybe something, something that has state and it could talk with the other actors. Uh, we are sending messages. So this is all. Uh, no method calls, no shared state, uh, nothing like that. So you should always send messages to the mailbox. This is the original, um, original concept that was designed. Vertex has a little bit that modified. I mean, it doesn't follow that model strictly, but yet again, uh, key concepts here that each actor has its own state. State is never shared. And the second one, all the communications is hap communication happen happens by sending messages. Okay, I think that is clear. So you can see actor two and actor three, they, if they don't need to communicate, they, they just don't send messages to each other. And uh, what is important here? Uh, this is, um, uh, we see that there, are, there is uh, decoupling. I mean, they are loosely coupled. All they have agreement upon only is that they communicate via messages. So you don't, as, as an actor, you don't care who you received the message from and who exactly received your message and process. This leads to pretty interesting conclusions. Uh, there are actually, there could be many instances of the same actor. Uh, this could be used for, uh, for scaling. I mean, if you need some part of your application to be scaled independently, for example, I don't know, something that talks to database, the one, that part, and you see that it needs to be scaled. You just, if you designed your application like Nectars and you have a Nectar that talks to that database and retrieves the data for you, you can just spawn more actors of there and all the rest application doesn't care how many there are, there are of them. They are talking with messages. Yeah, so this is the key concept. Okay, let's move on. From the vertex perspective, vertical, Vertical is the same as actor. Vertical is actor in vertex. So I'll be uh, using vertical name starting from this point. Okay, vertical is very simple. So it has start and stop methods. No, nothing more than that. So uh, Java, I mean, on the language level, it can't enforce you to follow this paradigm. paradigm. Uh, only some tools may be used for there, but the language itself, there are no restrictions. Okay, so, so the developer is the one who is responsible for not sharing state with other verticals. So this is your responsibility as a, as a developer. And all the communication happens by a separate mechanism, not separate mechanism, but a separate, mm, uh, separate interface that, I mean, separate class, separate instance, 
uh, this is called event bus. So this is event bus is something like the medium the medium here uh, for sending all those messages. You see those arrows and mailboxes. All that is implemented in Vertex by a separate class that is event bus. Now let's go take a look. What is that like? So, okay. So vertical, you see, stop and start, start and stop methods. Nothing, nothing really interesting. With event bus, this is this becomes more interesting. You can see uh, there are a lot of them, but uh, then what what most important are these ones? You can register a consumer for a specific address, uh, and you can send request and you can send message where it is yeah so uh send messages like send some message to address and that's all you don't wait for reply and request is the same but oh probably this one is better uh you send uh, to specific address some message and you wait for reply this is something that we will discover uh, in depth later but you provide some some mechanism to uh, handle the uh, response from from the other side that you're talking to yeah that's all um, message consumer is basically has the main method that you'll be using this is handler i mean the way how it looks like for example I dropped some uh, snippets to show you some basic concepts. I used Groovy language. I hope that this is not a problem, but generally this is, this is uh, the same as Lambda. So what we say here, we want to register a consumer and uh, specify the handler for, uh, for um, how to process incoming messages. So I say that this vertical, this actor, you see, this is called receiver actor, will be using, uh, will be consuming messages on this address. And uh, the way how it will be consuming it is described in this Lambda. So basically we just log this message, nothing special. Okay, um, the message itself, what it is, very, I don't know, it's pretty simple, like an HTTP message, but it has address, uh, what's important, it has address and reply address, has the body itself, and headers. I haven't found any real, real usage for that, but Vertex has some mechanism that use that. Well, anyway, you can have those. Yeah, also it supports codecs, that allow you to, if we go back here, and remind that uh, all the messages that uh, actors are using in the original design, uh, those are always serialized. Vertex actually does uh, optimization on that. Uh, if two actors are running on the same JVM, we don't need to serialize that message. Actually, so we can avoid that, and Vertex allows that to do that uh, by using message codec. So you have to implement this, and here is my transparent local event bus codec. So it doesn't support uh, uh, sending messages over the wire. I mean over the network, but it supports to uh, talk uh, inside. Uh, talk to verticals inside the one GVM by just simply passing the object. Or Vertex takes care of uh, correct publishing of that state. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So this is the basic glimpse on a vertical. So you can have some, some understanding what it is. Okay, let's go next. Uh, so as you have already guessed, the arc, uh, if you go follow that pattern of using verticals, of using actors, you will end up with a different architecture, very different from what you used uh, to have. I mean, in Spring applications, we usually don't think in actors. We usually think in layers. 
and controllers, service layer, and so on. But here we, uh, with Vertex, we usually design our system as a set of verticals. And uh, when we start to do that, vertical as an actor should be uh, considered as a unit of parallelism, not thread. With Vertex, we can easily forget about threads if we follow uh, their design. I mean, vertex design. Okay, so the next one is uh, that the second concept is uh, I already noticed and uh, noted that, and uh, you need to see uh, your messages that you want to send need to be serializable. So the, the data that you are sending, that your services, uh, I mean, your layers, for example, in uh, in classic uh, Spring application, you just pass objects. But if you want, to, in, if you go to Vertex and you want to uh, pass objects between uh, different services, between different verticals, you should take care that those uh, objects are serializable. So you can, uh, you need to take care of uh, of that serialization thing. Yeah, and usually go take advantage of uh, that for local communications only you don't need to serialize yeah and this is it the the final point is something that i already talked about uh, that unlike in spring when you uh, think about how request comes in and gets processed between layers then goes up to the layers and goes to as a response in Vertex, you usually design it as a set of actors, I don't know, set of set of some, some, some beans in your system that will just interact with each other to produce you a result that you want. Uh, you can use uh, even, uh, I don't know, some, um, something, scheduled operations that just uh, do the work for you. I mean, this is this is not even uh, request response. Um, I mean, this is this is not tied to be a web application that needs to serve request responses. You can write any application with with Vertex uh, because thinking in actors uh, really gives you much more possibilities there. Okay. Yeah, and what is uh, about microservice architecture? So with microservice architecture, that is also something good. I mean, uh, we found, we still have, for example, on the project that I'm working right uh, on right now, we still have those layers, but um, that, that behavior uh, is very beneficial thing to have, yeah. Okay, let's move on, okay. Sorry. Uh, so I left a link here for a very good talk. The author of this actor's model himself, he describes it. I really, if you if you are interested, I really encourage you to go to check this out. And okay, let's go to see some code. So I have a few, few examples. So let's start with this one. Uh, here we what we want just deploy some verticals uh, deploy in in vertex means start start verticals it's uh, deploy verticals means start some actors undeploy means stop very sim simple okay so I have a small method that allows you allows me to um, to start 10 verticals okay let's run it and see what happens okay let me start another application this is actually for this particular example, this doesn't matter. So we have, uh, in this example, we have 10 receiver verticals. As I said, we have one actor, but 10 instances of it. Uh, the, the way how Vertex, um, if you send uh, any message to address that all these verticals are listening on, uh, Vertex distributes them evenly. I mean, it uses round robin to spread that load. Okay, so this is how it looks. Uh, let's go see 
uh, at the receiver vertical. So basically, uh, when I asked Vertex to start this vertical, Vertex just uh, set something on his side, of course, of course, and basically executed this method. Uh, important part here, when initial initialization is done, uh, we need to uh, complete this future, this promise. Uh, this is something that you will get used when you will be working, when you start working with async asynchronous code. This uh, future can actually be uh, completed much later somewhere after, the, for example, the database has uh, has started. I mean, not database, uh, your connection to the database. Uh, you got the connection from the pool. Something like that. So, yeah, at first glance, this looks pretty simple, uh, the way how we deploy. Uh, so let's take a look how those messages are sent. Another example goes, uh, goes through, we have receiver and sender, and we have one of each other, I mean one instance of each other, and they start communication. So, Kind of, I started them. Uh, one receiver, one sender starting here. Um, what sender does? Let's take a look what sender does actually. This is what we are interested in. So, the main idea behind this sender is that just periodically uh, sends messages to receiver. Nothing special, just for example, this is pretty good. Uh, the period is one second. And after some time, it will stop itself. Just for demonstration, I'll show you why I do that. So, okay, um, what we want here. We are sending different types of messages here. The first one is send and forget. We can uh, send from sender to receiver a string message that you don't care about whether it's, if that triggered some operation on, the, on that side for that, uh, for that actor, we don't care about the result. If that operation was successful or not successful, or maybe this is, operation is so simple that there is no result we need. Okay, this is one type. Another type of messages that we can, uh, we are sending something. So here we go. We are sending this message and we expect response from there. And for processing the response, this is the main part uh, with asynchronous programming. Uh, we are not waiting for response. We are saying that we want to process it later when it arrives. And when it arrives, what we want to do is to, uh, to do this, whatever is in this lambda or groovy closure. Okay, so, and uh, Vertex will take care of that. I mean, the implementation of the event bus will take care of that. And then when the response comes in, Vertex will call you back and will pass you, uh, provide you um, the response message here. And you will simply able, will be able to handle it, whatever you want. Uh, the same with the objects. Uh, basically, uh, you can send just an object here. So, you see, uh, we are doing the request to the sum address and passing our passing the object here. Also, we are waiting for response for some response there. Let's take a look how that works on the receiver side. So, receiver side for all those three addresses uh, when it starts, when the, the receiver is starting it registers uh, some handlers for those addresses. And for, uh, for string messages, that is pretty simple, but what happens with, uh, with object? I mean, what happens when you pass the object here? Mm -hmm. This uh, codec comes into play. So actually in this, in this application uh, that I'm running right, right now, we register the codec for that 
and that codec allows uh, to pass person object person is a simple DTO very simple uh, object for demo uh, so this we say that for when I want to pass that object use this codec and this codec just passes that transparently okay so receiver uh, when receives that object it has it may to do with it what it what what he wants so basically what we are doing we are storing them in a list and responding back with the how many objects have this actor received yet this is important thing i will demonstrate that later i mean we'll see how how that differs when there are many instances and actors yeah so this is it for this uh, for this uh, snippet. Basically, we have two verticals that talk to each other. I don't pay attention to threads yet. Uh, we'll take that at that later. Okay. Mm. Let me remember what is there. Okay, so we have a next snippet that shows how the round robin uh, distribution works. So if we have a single uh, so not this one. Yeah, let's do this one. If we have a single sender, this one is a rapid sender. Rapid sender uh, actually is not doing it periodically, but uh, floods uh, the receiver with uh, lots of messages very quickly. So, okay. We have one sender and 10 receivers. So if we run this snippet, Thanks to this counter, not here, receiver, uh, to this counter, we'll be able to see how many objects one particular instance, because you, you remember each vertical, each, um, each instance of uh, actor has its own state. Uh, this is probably not what we will want in an application where multiple uh, actors will be deployed of this, because uh, this state depends on uh, on the routing, who, uh, not who, but how Vertex routed the message to which. This is not something that we want in the end application, but this is this is what I want to demonstrate here. So each time we append this list and we reply, how many uh, items have I uh, received so far? So and here is here is the log. Let's take a look at it. So. We started 10 receivers and we started one sender, see? Okay, and sender started to send messages right away. So it was sends one message, another one, another one. You see receiver has uh, received a couple of messages but they are actually running on the different threads. So the receiver star uh, i mean they are not there are two different actors they are not coupled to each other so what happens in one is not real not much blocking or somehow depend on the other one so you can send messages from one uh, one actor and that could have different timings how those are received process and replied with from from other ones so the main concept that I wanted to describe here is, is this one. So sender, when he sent this object, each time it increases the number, but the receiver uh, replies, how many uh, messages have I received so far? So now you can see that those objects are different. I mean we have one receiver and 10, uh, sorry, one sender and 10 receivers. So sender keeps sending messages, but Vertex distributes them evenly uh, among those receivers. So that's why we have a receiver that received only one message on that particular address on the event bus. But the sender 
uh, sent already have sent already five messages. So that's where that distributions come in. Yeah, I guess that's pretty simple. Uh, you can explore this a little more deeply if you want later. Okay, so, and now let's go to the third one. Oh yeah, we covered this. Okay, cool. So let's come back to the... Uh, to Hintra, sorry, can I yep. ask a question from a chat? Yeah, of course. Uh, so people are asking if, uh, does it mean that state that we keep in a sender and receiver isn't good for clustering? Yeah, definitely. And it is, it is even, to, even it's not good for, uh, for that case that I've described. I mean, if you want few, uh, few instances of one actor, of one vertical, uh, let's, let's come back. Uh, this is exactly the, the source of your problem. If you want that state to be something that, I mean, that comes into play, then yes, you have a problem because uh, another instance would have its own state and that would be different. And depending on, for example, if uh, another, if some other uh, actor sends a message there and that actor is expecting to change state of the application, if uh, that actor is, I mean, that change, it depends on who exactly received that message. This is the bad design for the actor's model. You shouldn't depend on that. And uh, as I said, I did this only for a demonstration to show you how messages, that messages are actually distributed. Yeah, so if we have 10 receivers and spawn them with messages, Vertex distributes those messages between those receivers. Uh, yeah, in general, your state should be somewhere in, uh, I don't know, it should be shared. It should be either some kind of storage like Redis or it should be database itself. Uh, if that's a first level cache, you always have that uh, cache inconsistency problems when clustering. So that's a classical, that's a classic problem that you will face always. I mean, this is not something specific to actors, verticals, vertex itself, but in uh. general. I'm oh, sorry, I just have a question, uh, but you can put a uh, receiver to objects into the uh, uh, thread local using uh, running context in Vertex and uh, in such case uh, all objects will be the same, uh, the, the, your account will be the same for all verticals, so you use it uh, to receive messages. Okay, we haven't come to the uh, threading yet. Uh... Uh, never matter because uh, any new instance of vertical will be run in another thread. It is totally isolated. And if you run in context, the context of thread will be shared between all of these uh, verticals uh, you created from factory. Yeah, but uh, the main problem, if you do this, you still have that problem with clustering. I mean, if there are two, two separate uh, this, that's another question, and actually there's a question to the codec you implemented. Uh, I saw your codec uh, implemented only for local event bus, not uh, to use uh, cluster at the person. Yeah, this is only for this code snippet. All I wanted, I just wanted to demonstrate how, how those messages are distributed. Of course, this kind of codec is something that you don't want uh, to use. This is for demonstration. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, clustering is a tricky thing. And in general, uh, whatever framework you're using, uh, you shouldn't have some local state, I mean, in memory state. Uh, there are, of course, there are sticky sessions, something, things like that. But this is another talk, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, Vertex has the same problem as, as other distributed systems. It's, uh, Vertex has a, um, a mechanism for that, which is called, uh, which is called, um, how do they call this? This also is um, over here. Uh, 
shared data yeah uh, they have this thing uh, they have uh, async shared maps uh, which you can back up by some uh, some cluster uh, provider and uh, you can store shared data in this maps but the access to them is asynchronous i mean this is not the map that you're uh, i mean this is this is the map that lives not on the gvm and uh, on your gvm and this is something that you will be accessing remotely and just like any remote calls, this is asynchronous in Vertex. Yeah, there is some, some such mechanism that you can use. I haven't found a usage for that yet. <laughs> uh, I, I can say when you can use it. Uh, when you use uh, a Rix version of Vertex, uh, very often if uh, the one uh, re uh, React operation uh, processes data, but uh, the second one uh, depends on this data, but it will be invoked a bit later. And in this case, any data pursue, uh, produced by the first operation might lose, and uh, you can put this in, uh, data into a sync map or shared map. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, it will be available for the next uh, operation, er Rix operation especially. It's uh, quite useful if you use a Rix version of uh, Vertex. I actually, my demo demo that uh, was in the beginning uses uh, Rx and I don't share any data. I mean, uh, uh, to, to try to run uh, long-term operations in uh, uh, Vertex. And you will see the result, uh, the, uh, especially if you work with database uh, with uh, bad connections, uh, some data might be lost. Hmm. That causes especially poor Rx version, not, not for asynchronous version, not for version uh, implemented on Axel, like in the uh, Quarkus framework or other ones, but it depends uh, to uh, observer and, uh, observable pattern used in Rx. Hmm. Strange, I haven't encountered such, such thing, but well, thank you. Thank you for, for the idea. I, I knew that, uh, that shared maps, they exist but I didn't, uh, didn't find any usage, thank you. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, so okay, we explored a little bit about uh, actors and verticals in vertex, and let's go to, uh, to the parallelism. What is, uh, what is so special about vertex there? So, okay, let's, take a brief review of how server based framework use. I mean, uh, for work, uh, the one that are not using asynchronous service, uh, the classic ones. I mean, the code that you used to, to, to write, I mean, probably five, four years, even now, often, you usually do this. I mean, you have a lot of that. So this is the classic way. For example, when we handle a request, what we do here, we uh, verify the authentication. For example, this is just some, I don't know, imaginary example. Uh, then we want to call the database here. And when the result is ready, only after that, we go to executing next uh, instruction there. And I mean, next line here on this same thread and nothing happens between this, uh, these two operations. This is classic way of how we as human usually think and as we write code and as we, as we uh, use, used to write code. So we want uh, four operations to be sequential and we do not expect that something happen in, happens in between of those uh, four calls, between those calls, okay. So this how uh, that looks from threads perspective. Okay, I will follow, uh, follow this pattern. Uh, the first operation, I always want uh, those operations be sequential. So the result of first operation uh, is used in the result of this as a incoming parameter in the second one. And the result of the second is a, a parameter for next one and so on. So you, uh, this is business logic. We must keep uh, that, sequential. Okay, uh, 
the lightest one is the first more dark it gets it's means that later it goes okay pretty simple so uh imagine that we're uh, handling uh, three requests there but in general there could be more of them and usually we use thread pools for that a 200 is by default uses used by tomcat uh, so when user request comes in uh, it gets processed by uh, a dedicated thread tomcat actually assigns a thread to process that re uh, request and uh, request is processed on that thread and takes the thread and it doesn't release the thread back to the thread pool until the result is done, is ready so um, that is pretty straightforward simple and it works really nice actually i mean the whole most of the java world works works this way but the problem comes in uh, when we see those black uh, black parts what is that that is the point where you are calling database and the thread uh, is put into wait state by the operating system uh, this is usually what we call thread is blocked i will be using blocked because everybody uses it but generally what you what you should think of it is that uh, you are using this thread and it is it's been put into wait state by the operating system and no one else can use that thread i mean uh, we put it on a shelf and this is a resource and we can't reuse it so it technically it doesn't do any work we are waiting for results and we cannot reuse that resource so this is this is the main problem that happens here so those black uh, black parts uh, mean that thread is slipping uh, thread is put into wait state and it's blocked what is important here is that proportion proportion proportions here are not accurate uh, those black parts are actually uh, much much longer than uh, the colored ones so the most time the th uh, thread is slipping it's waiting for result from the database because the network call is much more expensive in i mean in time uh, than some computation so those computations uh, the ones that are colored parts those are really small compared to black ones so what we end up with we have a lot of threads that uh, very much time of its lifetime they are slipping so that's the main problem with a thread per request uh, model of parallelism here okay probably i have already uh described all of this here but the 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 last part is very important to uh to mention uh probably last two parts uh, so let's start from the from the last so in this model there are th 200 threads but the actual cpu cores that can run those thread in parallel there are much much less i mean there are four eight sixteen cores there that can actually in parallel run those threads so you if you use huge thread pools and a small number of threads and you have a hot system that having a lot of requests you should uh, uh, juggle between those threads and uh, give each one a fair amount of uh, CPU time which is managed by the operating systems but uh, main part here is that is not free so uh, switching between uh, between those threads is pretty expensive and uh, oh not here uh, switching between uh, uh, java process space and kernel work a uh, kernel space this is something like known like operation system context switch is also doesn't come free so when you want your uh, uh, when your thread needs to get um, get it put in a waiting state that leads to a, a context switch of the operating system 
and that's a bad thing actually and uh, uh, yeah there is such thing as spurious wake-ups which also comes uh, into play uh, and uh, worsen the performance uh, under load I won't get much into details but uh, in general uh, in general the more threads you have the more load you have the most the more than the more uh, percent of CPU time you spend on the governing those threads juggling assigning work to them not the actual work you want to do as an application as you're uh, spent on working on implementing that business logic that you want so that's the problem okay so uh, vertex uses reactor pattern how that solve this um, first thing it uses it this way you have one thread let's just stick for uh, for one thread for a moment we have one thread and what if we won't be blocked we won't be having those black parts we just throw them away so what we want if we have some part of work let's let's execute it right now so when it's done let's take another part of work and this is how uh, event loop uh, works event loop or reactor pattern uh, they are usually called this way so uh, uh, the code here also has that um, I mean happens before uh, that happens in Java happens before this a little bit okay that has that uh, sequential guarantee kind of I mean this part gets executed first then this one gets executed next and then this one and then that one but the most important part here is that you run uh, the operation that you want and you're not waiting for the result uh, instead you structure your code the way that you are providing the callback or you're providing the handler for the result so the framework the platform that you're using in our case this is vertex in javascript for example javascript follows this pattern from its very big i mean from its from design so javascript works like this by design unlike java so in java we have to follow this pattern in javascript for example it's just the only pattern that you have so anyway uh, instead just, of just yep. a small notice uh, when you say javascript uh, you talking about not just right yeah uh, both exactly uh, no matter i mean uh, both node.js and javascript uh, they all no. are single threaded and they all are using callbacks uh, so this is like uh, uh, no the callbacks is a paradigm of functional programming but not just use callback because it's use a uh, react pattern and uh, uh, indifferent uh, to not just pattern of react uh, vertex use multi reactor pattern that means each factory create own uh, reactor for uh, some particular uh, verticals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, not quite that, a little bit with a small uh, difference, but yeah, in general, yes. So it's a not small difference. It's a huge difference. No, 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 no. I mean, a small difference that uh, it doesn't create new threads. Uh, it creates. Uh, specific number of threads no more than than you specify i mean if i want uh, my application to have only four threads i just say that and if i have hundreds of verticals hundreds of actors those actors are actually executed only on those four threads you don't spawn tons of those right because uh, verticals reuse it as a lightweight task yeah yeah exactly so this is tiny difference so it not spawns but it uses what Vertex uh, provides for it. Okay, so uh, so the main uh, concept here is that we are not, uh, now we are not waiting for response in the place where we called that, but we are providing the, the uh, handler, the Lambda, that will be executed some time later when the, when the result of that operation is ready and vertex takes uh, will take care of that 
So this is the main concept here. So as you can see, that gets clumsy a little bit when the callback is inside the callback and inside the callback and inside the callback. So when you want to run those uh, multiple chain, those operations, uh, multiple of them, many of them, uh, that gets uh, nested down deep. So I mean, this is a, this is known problem in all the other languages that use callback. So this is nothing uh, uh, nothing special about Vertex. Okay. Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, register a handler for the result. So in this way, this results in such case. So uh, if there is no work, of course, there are the, the main thread, event loop thread. Uh, this is called main thread, event loop thread, uh, and the pattern is reactor. Okay, so... Mm, uh, this means that main thread is always taking tasks, small tasks, and executing them. And uh, those dark pieces will be there only when there is no work. So no work, thread gets slip, uh, into slip state. It waits for work. But when there is work, some work, it will be executing it. So if you even started some doing some database operation, you, st you only started it. and uh, you do not wait for it. You get you get next uh, work to work uh, to do, and you are waiting for that operation being done by the driver. And the driver, you, uh, not usually, but they are written uh, as asynchronous drivers. They also they also have some their own threads, but that is kind of hidden behind the scenes. Usually, don't care of that, and this is a good thing actually. So yeah, and what important is here. Uh, as you can see, uh, the title here, it says async and single threaded. Uh, two parts are very important. First, it's async. This means that we are, do not wait for the result of repair operation. And the second one is also very important. It's single threaded. What it, does it mean? It means that all this code that you see here, all those instructions, they are always, in the queue, they are always executed on the same single thread that vertex assigned to this vertical, to this actor. So this is a very nice guarantee that you have uh, because having the, that, you don't need to care about uh, concurrency issues like volatiles, uh, synchronization or anything like that. Uh, you always can expect that your code is being executed on the same thread. Yeah, this is two important things here. Okay. Um, I've probably told much, most of those. Yeah, but one important thing. But what if here we want to run uh, some length operation? For example, I don't know, we have legacy, uh, some legacy part of our application that is shipped as a jar uh, and you don't have access to uh, sources. I don't know, there is policy that you can change those sources. And there is a method that you need to call, but that method is blocking. It's gonna block the, the thread that is calling it. I mean, I run that method and I end up with a situation like this. So I this let's imagine this call API, the third one. It comes from that library. And I have no other options uh, rather than call that method. So I can that call that asynchronously. When I call it, it blocks my thread. So what to do with it? The answer is simple. Do not call that on the main thread. So this is pretty simple. So if you want to call that block in operation that will have those black spots inside it, you should run it on a separate thread. So Vertex has that uh, worker pools for that. You can see the last point, yeah. And uh, it is integrated into Vertex. This is just a regular uh, thread pool, but with few important uh, tweaks that you probably would prefer over uh, your own homebrew uh, thread pools that you are managing by yourself. It's, be it's better to use Vertex uh, 
worker pool. Yeah, this is a very similar concept to uh, Node.js. They also have worker pools, same for, uh, same for JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, I would say again, there are two pools in uh, Vertex. And uh, when you tell that uh, vertical should uh, proceed some synchronous long term operations, it's better to mark them as a worker uh, vertical. And as a result, it will be pushed to, to use worker pool instead of uh, reactor. Yeah, yeah. There are three types of verticals in vertex, but generally we cover only the simplest one. I mean, the one that you will be using most of the time for worker. Yeah, you can but, actually. But when you say, but when you say uh, uh, never use a synchronous operation is the main uh, threat, uh, you need to say uh, it's better to move all of these operations uh, to the workers in vertex. This uh, conceptual, conceptual uh, thing uh, to use uh, verticals. Otherwise, you need to do something with completable future or Rx versions if you want to. If, if you don't want to use uh, the worker verticals, uh, vertex allows to do this. Let me show probably here. How it's called? Execute blocking. Yeah. So. Uh, so Never mind. Uh, or in such case, uh, you use operation in worker pool. Yeah, exactly. So that is oh sorry, that is exactly what I wanted to say. So uh, there are mechanisms that allow you to push work that you want uh, not some execute some code on not on event loop thread on the one right. that yeah. So you can use verticals uh, of the worker type. Uh, there are two of them. Uh, worker verticals and some kind of, I don't remember, I never used them, uh, the ones that actually run uh, concurrently because uh, well, those, those are details. Anyway, so the main idea behind this is never put lengthy blocking operations on the main, uh, main thread. For that, you should use uh, worker pools and there are multiple options to use them. I don't cover that part in my, uh, my presentation here. Okay, so uh, the reactor pattern is uh, not something new. It's been here for ages. Uh, as I said, uh, JavaScript, I mean, the language specification itself, I mean, not the specification, the language um, threading model itself, it uses this pattern. Node.js as the um, as an offspring of uh, JavaScript also uses the same. This is not a surprise. And actually, in Java, you also faced this reactor pattern a long time ago. If you ever was working with uh, UI uh, frameworks like uh, JavaFX, uh, Swing, or even AWT, all of that uses exactly the same principle. Uh, they are using the reactor pattern. Uh, the only reason to do that uh, is uh, because it's simpler. Uh, you have one thread, you don't have uh, to write concurrent code. And that's the main, the main reason. You don't have any problems with concurrency. So if you said that this uh, button should change uh, its color from green to, to red, for example, uh, that is always that always happens. You don't have to uh, to fight those problems like visibility on what thread you change the state, or something like to set it here and wait until it will be ready. So all these state changes happen only on a single UI thread. This is the main concept behind those UI frameworks, and. If you know, if you are familiar with that, Vertex has exactly the same principle. It's async, and it's single threaded. Yeah. Yeah, and as I mentioned, there is a gold rule, so-called Vertex gold rule: do not block the main thread. So uh, you should never block this event loop thread. This is the main part here. Okay, so probably we're close to the end. 
Yeah, I, I have actually a suggestion to you, Dmitro. Uh, okay. I know there is a lot of material left. I think we are like at a half uh, mark uh, of the whole. So do you mind breaking it down and maybe we can have a separate session to follow up on the tools and we just wrap, uh, wrap up the base vertex right now? Okay, yeah, we can do that. That, okay. I think that would be great. Cool. But let's do that. Okay, let's go explore there and the next part will be, uh, will be for the next session. Cool, this is even better than I, than I expected. Okay, so uh, let's explore how that single threaded works. Uh, in this snippet, what I have, I have two verticals, two actors, and vertex assigns uh, to each of those, assigns its own uh, event loop thread. And all the code will be ever executed only on those th two threads. The one, one thread for receiver and one thread for uh, sender. Okay, so what we have here, rapid sender is uh, flooding with messages, uh, sends messages to receiver, and it leaves only 400 milliseconds. I mean, I just didn't want to kind of run it for ages. <laughs> okay, so the main idea to, to look at here is this. So we should see that all our code for receiver, you see, this is receiver, all its code is ever executed on the thread zero. This is this is exactly what I was uh, what vertex means, uh, and uh, what I was telling when I said that this is single threaded. So, single threaded is a principle that applies to a single actor, single vertical. So, technically, vertex itself, I mean the application, the framework has multiple threads, of course, but uh, Single threaded is applied to a single actor. I mean, the default actor, as uh, as you have already um, said, there are types of verticals, but we're talking about the main type. Uh, the single threaded vertic verticals, which you can use by, uh, I mean, which you can implement by just extending from it and starting like that. So for, uh, for uh, for not single threaded verticals, you actually do the same, but when you're starting them, you need to provide some deployment options and specify those. But by default, everything is single threaded. Not everything, every actor is single threaded. So this is exactly what I wanted to show you. And if we check those numbers, mm, Those are often uh, go not in the sequence. I mean, probably this one go into sequence. Yeah, so here we can see uh, sender got the response uh, and something got there in between. You see, another vertical was running on another thread and it just printed something in, into the log. Uh, just like here. So uh, this one was responding with, uh, not responding, it was sending messages and now receiver got one. So that happens uh, in parallel between two threads, but each single thread is always, uh, each in single actor is always using a single vertical, or a single thread, single vertical, single thread. Uh, never, uh, two blocks of code, never two tasks. I mean, those blocks of code, the ones that I uh, described here, they are never uh, executed concurrently, uh, in parallel. Not, yeah, in parallel. So only one by one uh, on a single thread. So yeah, this is the main concept here. Um, so I have a question. Course. So, uh, if we need several instances of an actor who performs uh, one action, uh, we need the same amount of threads to support these several instances. Great. And I have actually an uh, example for that. Oh, I had. Okay. 
let's model your case. You have thousand, thousand of, uh, of verticals. So if we run this, I hope that this is the one that compiles. Yeah, cool. You will still have that predefined number of threads and uh, that predefined uh, it by default it means number of cores available multiplied by two you can easily modify that on the vertex options i don't remember how to do that New vertex options um, cpu not cpu oh, okay so it's limited by the real threads on the cpu uh, let's say two. Yeah, you can even, uh, no, no, no. It's uh, limited by what is configured. And right now in this snippet, Vertex uses default. The def by default, you, you can see I have, I have eight uh, CPU cores on my machine. Oh, okay, so, I got it. I got it. Yeah, it just read uh, what is there. It's kind of same default that almost everyone will find use useful. So let's see how that works on two threads. This is very interesting. You see, only two threads. But what is interesting here, there are still thousands of verticals, you see? Lots of them. So there are a lot of verticals being started. But what happens is that those tasks here that you can see, they are still executed on the same thread, but they belong to the different verticals. And this is a really nice concept here. Uh, being single threaded is not uh, tied to the actor's model, I mean, to the actor's state. Okay, okay, you're good, thank you. Yep, cool. So that's probably it for, for, for today. We can continue on the next part next day yep okay cool one question hello Taras hi Dima <laughs> so my question will be related to uh, as you probably guessed the dependency injection will you cover this uh, in the next part maybe you've already tried to introduce uh, this approach to your project yep Yep, uh, I will cover this on the next topic. Uh, I have even separate, mm, not capture, but separate part for that topic dedicated. And uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty tricky to make it work fine. Uh, the approach that I was originally using, I mean, probably not me, even you, <laughs> you originally designed, it was uh, not working perfectly in some corner cases. and figured out how to resolve those. Yeah, yeah, I will cover that. I see, thank you. Um, okay, yeah, I, I have a question though. Oh, I had it during the presentation. So who is actually uh, playing the role of a broker here? Is it just a ver vertex instance inside the GVM that you're running? And when does it start? Uh, I didn't quite get a question. Uh, who plays yeah, the role actually, of uh, roles, the messages, and assigns them to actors and do all that work? Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is all that is provided by Vertex. So, what you are using, you are using Event Bus. This concept of message medium that allows you just kind of say, I want to send this message to this address if you remember this is this is very uh, this this is the concept taken from that actor's model you only have mailboxes uh, which uh, kind of addresses and whenever you want to talk to someone you just send a message to a specific address and that's all behind that address there could be many instances that are ready to process a lot of data or if, if there is no a lot of data expected why why would you spawn a lot of those that could be one uh one actor sitting there um, yeah 
uh, important part about uh, event bus. Event bus is not a replacement for a uh, message queue system if because event bus doesn't guarantee any storage of data so if you if you have uh, if you're designing a system where when some synchronous operation happens and it pushes some data to to the queue that needs to be processed synchronously by some other party and that the processing of the data is crucial and the receiver may not be present at the moment and but when he will yeah uh, and get ready he will pick up that task so event bus is not about this event bus is just like calling methods inside your application or inside your clustered applications calling two methods between two different services this is just replacement for method calls not for full 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 blown uh, message queue system yeah Okay, thank you, got it. Um, but then I have a second question on this topic. Uh, that, that actually goes down to the computable future you have, well, not the future not complete, that you have to complete when the actor is ready. What does it actually do? Does it like allow calls to happen on the sector or how does it work? Uh, nope. Uh, you are actually, what, what you are doing, you are calling not actor, you are calling address. Yeah, and address I mean, yeah. gets available after maybe I should share the screen again. Yeah, this is a pretty important thing that you mentioned. Uh, address gets not here the receiver one. The receiver one it registers. So we send that we are saying that on the event bus we are registers the consumer that will be handling uh, messages like this and after we set this here uh, we already have that address registered and the messages can come to the processor yeah yeah this is uh, this is pretty important part because uh, all those communications here um, that I did are pretty naive I mean uh, I start sending messages. I actually do have that mechanism that I deploy everything. And when it's ready, only after that, I do the next step. Exactly for that, that problem that you said. So the only way to, uh, to know that uh, some actor has completely initialized been initialized and uh, finished its initialization is only by uh, by subscribing to the result of this operation of this deploy vertical when you deploy something you need to subscribe to result and actually you can check if uh, if something went wrong uh, you can uh, act accordingly but this is executed I mean this handler that we are uh, saying that when you deploy this actor let me know and call me this happens only after only after this, uh, or this. Okay. Here go. you can actually oh, fail you can fail and if that happens then your subscriber here uh, you will fall into this case yeah so you will uh, receive the result that everything failed and you can act accordingly yeah this is like that this is how asynchronous programming is <laughs> yeah, it's tricky and uh, that that do this and when it's ready do that may become clumsy that's exactly uh, the next part why to never use those callback style why why you should should avoid that not to never use of course but should avoid and instead use rx java <laughs> okay yeah that totally makes sense thank you